In this video, I'll be talking about the van der Waals equation for non-ideal gases. And we define the non-ideal gas as a gas that has high pressure, high P, and low temperature. But there, but we said also that there are two more factors that influence it. And that is the intermolecular forces, I'm just going to write as IMFs, and the, mole the molecular volume. And what I refer by molecular volume is the volume of each of the gas particles, as we cannot assume it's just zero. Each molecule has its, has its own volume and that counts. And the intermolecular forces are just the the, the forces that occur between each of the molecules of, of the gases. So, we cannot use the ideal gas law here. So, PV equals NRT. That doesn't work here because we have two more factors. We have this and we have this. So, we have to modify this equation to add this, these two factors. So we'll have an, an equation that is a little more more complicated, but it's still it's it's just a little longer. So let's write our wrong color, our ideal gas law, PV equals N R T. So let's first modify the molecular volume, molecular volume. So we have to modify this V right here. What we have to do is we have to add a correction factor. And that correction factor will be NB. And the N stands for the number of moles. So for now we'll have the, the number of moles right here and right here. So don't worry about that for now. And our B is just a constant. But this constant is, a spe is specific to each gas. So specific to each gas. So for oxygen, it's going to be different than for hydrogen. You, and and you, will, you will most likely be given that constant. So then we will have we we have to add that to the to the volume and it's a subtraction so b minus mb so instead of pv equals nrt we now have p v minus mb equals nrt now let's go to the following page p v minus mb equals N R T. Now let's we have to fix the pressure va value because of the intermolecular forces or IMS. And intermolecular forces will make the pressure to go down. So our pressure will be lower. That doesn't pressure is lower. So we'll want that pressure to go up, so we'll instead of of this of subtraction, we'll be adding our correction factor. In this case, we have our co our correction factor of n squared times a over v squared, and the n stands for the number of moles. Two. The a is a constant like v. And it's specific to each gas too. And the V is just the volume. So we said we will add it. So P plus N squared A over V. That is our new pressure value. So let's write our equation. P plus and square.
put A, B, B minus, and B equals NIT, right? That's what we have for now. Sorry, I forgot the squared here. The this correction factor, I forgot. It's, it's squared. So the volume down here is squared. Now let's. That is what we call our Van der Waals equation. So you could think of it as the ideal gas law plus the correction factors. And we would end up with this. William squared. This times C minus N B because of the molecular pressure. The the molecular, the molecular volume, sorry. Is equal to N R T. And that is our Van der Waals equation. So now let's let's solve a a problem in which we have a non-ideal gas. So the problem says carbon dioxide gas, one mole, we have a mole of carbon dioxide, so we're given our N, one mole, and it's at 373 Kelvin. It has a volume of 536 milliliters. So let's write it as 0 0.536 liters already. And a pressure of 50 atmosphere. So you can see that the, that the pressure is already high. And that's just telling you, oh, this is a non-ideal gas. But never assume that just by looking at the data. They will usually tell you. You'll know when to use the Van der Waals equation if they give you the A and the B, or the, or the correction factors. So, and now they're telling us that the B is equal to 0 0.0428 liter per mole and they want us to find out what the A factor is so they're not asking us for the pressure or any value they're giving us everything they just want us to find out the correction factor for this gas so let's write our Van der Waals equation so it's pressure plus N squared A over V squared times the volume minus NB is equal to NRT. One more thing, the R is a constant and this time you you will not use the I said that whenever you're looking for pressure or you have pressure you'll use the 0 0.08 to 1 liter atmosphere mole Kelvin not the 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin because in this case we have the atmosphere here. So be careful about that. Never confuse the two R values. Now just let's solve for A first. So N squared A over V squared is going to be equal to N R T over V minus M B minus the pressure. Then A is going to be the volume squared over the number of moles squared times all of this and RT V minus NB minus pressure. I know it's a lot of calculations, but that's how it works for non ideal gases. So I get that the, vol the volume squared over the, the number of moles squared is 0 0.287 I'm not writing the units for now I'll do it at the end uh, this part I get that the NRT over V minus MB is 62.091 and the pressure is 50 so our A will be equal to 3.47 now let's get the units. Uh, vol volume squared over number of moles squared is liter squared. So we have for now liter squared over mole squared. NRT will be uh, liters atmospheres. And V minus MB is just liters. So 
we'll have atmosphere minus atmosphere. So our units will be liters squared times atmospheres over moles squared. And you don't have to, to obtain the units every time because it's just a constant. For A, it will always be liters squared atmosphere over moles squared. And for B, it will always be liters per mole. And that's how you solve the problem using the Van der Waals equation.